Now, there's been concern over the whereabouts of an Iranian athlete who competed internationally without covering her hair. Elnaz Rakabi took part in a climbing competition in South Korea and videos of her climbing without a headscarf went viral. Sources have told the BBC her phone and passport had been confiscated and that her whereabouts were unknown. Iran now says she's on her way home and has strongly denied what it calls fake news. Iran is currently suppressing women's rights protests over forced hijab wearing that have swept the country in the past few minutes. An Instagram post has appeared on Elnaz Rakabi's account in which she apologises for any concern and insisted that her bare-headed appearance had been unintentional. Well, we can talk now to entrepreneur and women's rights activist Negin Shiragai. She's been following this story for us and joins us now. Welcome to you. Thanks very much for being with us. Tell us a bit more uh, about this lady and the context to this incident and where we think she is now. Um, as you mentioned, there was just an update about her Instagram post. And we know from experience that th we were expecting something like this coming from the Iranian intelligence um, because this this is the pattern they've been doing. They're trying to say that this was a mistake. They're apologizing for it. But we know Elnaz decided to do this. She planned this even before going to South Korea and she wanted to take off her job as an act of resistance, um, you know, solidarity with other Iranian women who are doing the same inside the country and she planned to go back and not seek asylum after this. This is a rare case that someone dared to do something like this and going back to the country and facing the consequences. And these consequences can be massive from um, torture, imprisonment. We, we know already her brother has been called in by the intelligence system. We know there's a lot of pressure on her family um, to kind of saying that this was an act of uh, as you said, accidental act, and it's not an, an act of resistance. But Elnaz has been a really brave girl, and she's been always like this. So um, I, I'm sure she would find a way to voice her, uh, you know, her resistance in other ways. You said it was known that she was going to do this as an act of resistance. How vocal was she about it? She wasn't vocal beforehand. We realized that just when she did it, because she talked to her friend about it and they went to the social media. They took to the social media and, and said this was pre-planned. She wanted to do this. Um, her team members uh, from previous years, they mentioned it as well. She had this kind of um, quite different characters. When she decided to do something, she would go for it. She She's not going to be afraid of not being able to participate in the national team anymore, which which is one of the uh, consequences that she has to face. She wouldn't, uh, you know, uh, shy away from imprisonment if that's something that she has to face. So um, it's it's really related to her personality and how she how brave she was all throughout her life. Tell us a bit more about her. She was there competing in South Korea at the Asian Championships, wasn't she? Yes, she was. And um, to, to get a, to give you a little bit more context, it's um, the Iranian, the, the female athletes in Iran, they've been under oppression more than even, uh, you know, the ordinary woman, because the, the type of things they choose chose to do is really limited. It's been monitored by the Iranian government on every single steps. So they and they cannot they can be really easily wiped off if they do something wrong. Um, we had other cases that people, uh, female athletes, decided to leave the country or seek asylum when some incidents similar happened. But for El Naz, she, um, she was a really um, self-driven something. And these are, these are the things that I read about her. I've never known her. But, and she wasn't a well-known household name because the Iranian government doesn't allow the uh, women's uh, you know, sports become the household names. But in recent years, as part of the resistance, that we are seeing today in Iran, there's, there has been a build up for uh, supporting the female athletes and uh, women's sport in, in the opposition inside the households in Iran. And her name beca became a little bit known by then, but, uh, but now it's a completely different scale. She's been known by everyone. There's been calls to the hotels in South Korea from inside Iran. People took, took upon themselves to find out where she is. They decided to go to the airport. Uh, and that's the other reason I think the Iranian government decided not to allow people to know where their uh, flight is going to land and when. Um, so they're trying to um, kind of prevent another protest around the airport.
Yeah, and of course, give the context of this, because for the past month or so, there have been huge protests right across Iran, which no, so, show no sign of stopping. And this was sparked by a woman who died in police custody for not wearing her hijab correctly. Yes, so Gina, Gina or uh, Mahsa Amini's death has been uh, sparked a massive protest inside the country that has been going every day in um, around th 300 cities that BBC actually counted them. It's, it's more than 300 cities now. And every night there's one or the other act of uh, protest and resistance that people are showing. Um, there, there are strikes in oil and petroleum uh, centers. There are um, uh, people taking to the streets and protesting. There are athletes artists um, taking off their hijab inside the country and saying they're not going to work with the government anymore. There's like in every layer of the society, we see different um, individual and collective acts of resistance that has been going on. And in, outside the country, the diaspora is asking the international community to take action to uh, for the G7 countries to um, cut their ties with the diplomatic ties with the Iranian government and from the UN Human Rights Council to hold a session on uh, women's rights um, inside Iran and for, you know, for the council and decide something on, on what's happening in Iran and act upon that. Okay, Negan, Shira Guy, thank you very much for updating us there on what we know about Elnaz Rekabi's disappearance. Thank you.